Welcome, forecast episode eight. It feels so weird to be saying eight and not. Were we, were we at 200 before? We're back in single digits. Ugh, single digits. Last Monday, we published a conversation with Brittany Hennessy and the advisory board from Four, all about what it means to be a black creator right now, how you balance running a business with using your account to promote and advocate for social justice, how you approach brand partnerships in this time. If you haven't seen it, it is fantastic. We're actually going to pull in uh, some of that interview into to answer one of today's questions. But I just, from the top of the video, want to encourage you to go watch that. It is fantastic. Also, if you haven't joined the Four community page on Facebook yet, I encourage you to do that. We're actually gonna start transitioning a lot of the influencer specific content from Instagram to our Facebook group. Um, it's gonna allow us to publish a lot more. Brittany's already been doing some great stuff there. We've got our next Four community chat coming up here in a couple of weeks. So if you haven't joined that page yet, I absolutely encourage you to do so. All right, let's start off this actual show with post of the week. So I love it. I asked y'all to send me a sponsored post that you were proud of and um, not many of you did, which is fine. Maybe you're being shy, uh, but Camille sent it, me a post. Um, her Instagram is guilty of glitz. We're gonna put it up here. I loved this. I loved one Camille that you sent this to me. Kudos to you. This post had incredible engagement, thousands of likes. I have my likes turned off so I can only see thousands of others. Before I talk about this actual post, it reminded me of a question I don't think is asked very often, but like, should you put more or less effort into the sponsored posts that you do than your normal posts? Obviously the answer should be more, right? You're being paid for them. But I often think that that isn't really done. I think that influencers aren't saying this is a sponsored post, I have to go above and beyond, I have to do something really special. Camille did that here. One, there's a carousel you can swipe through. I love, again, this is the second time we've used someone that's photoshopped themselves into the photos multiple times, but it's COVID and quarantine and it's weird to have other people, but she's got herself in there four times, which is amazing. And there is a recipe at the end, so all that is great. The copy is awesome, I think, like starts off with a little bit of a story saying like, hey, I was pretty bummed that I had to cancel all these trips this summer. No reason to kind of throw myself a pity party. Rather than focusing on all the things that got canceled, how about you enjoy the things you're still capable of doing? The photos are really fun. Honestly, like reading the copy, she seems excited about this. Different doesn't have to be less fun. Summer 2020 isn't canceled. We're still gonna have a safe, hot girl summer. All in all, sounds like her voice, sounds like she's really excited, has put some effort in. People are just like, I love this ad. This is a great ad. Congratulations, this is awesome. You killed it. Like, that's what you want from your community. You wanna put a sponsored post out and have people be really excited about it. I think Camille did a great job of that. Y'all should check it out, you should follow her. We're starting with a easy question. Someone asked, uh, what brand of gin, vermouth, Campari do you use in your Negronis? You know, I haven't, I, I don't feel like I've got this totally nailed down. I asked my friend Valentino, who is the head bartender at the Four Seasons Bar at Surfside in Miami, uh, one of the best bartenders in the world. He always uses Bombay, which I find works well. I've also used Hendrix, but mostly because I think the bottle is pretty. I will say for vermouth, I try and use uh, Carpano Antica, uh, which is a little bit more expensive, but is fantastic. My only word of advice is if you're using Martini Rosso, is that the like normal? Martini and Rossi. If you're using Martini and Rossi, I would just not. There are a lot of very cool vermouths. I think one of the cool things about Negronis is that you can kind of switch up the gin and vermouth. Again, I don't need to go back and talk about Stanley Tucci's Negroni. If you were with us in the beginning of quarantine, I'm still upset by the way that Stanley Tucci makes a Negroni. But I think you should, you should feel like you should experiment, try different things. Um, but don't use Martini and Rossi because that stuff is trash. Question number one, real question number one is, in a time where we're just getting hit over and over, what are your thoughts on sponsored content, when to pause a campaign, when to skip something, etc.? So as I said, I wanna kick this over to the advisory board. I think they had great answers for this and I think they are in a much better position to answer this question than I am. When you have a branded campaign that's scheduled to go live and something happens as it's happening more often, you know, as the time goes by, what do you do? You know, do you do you just push forward and you post? Some influencers yesterday did just posting, you know, 
So let's talk about being an influencer who's pushing for change and the financial repercussions. Because people always want to know, how does this affect my money? Before we jump all the way to money, I, I just yeah. want to comment on your, your last part. Because I, I, I'm with you. I lean a little bit more your way than Ernest's way in terms of giving people grace. Because you're right. A lot of us weren't doing this work actively uh, or at least on our platforms all the time. My, most of my platform, the people that follow me, I would say is predominantly white people before black people. And that's a whole other mm. conversation to unpack and not the point. But what I think I've taken away from that is that the influencer that doesn't want to get, you know, somebody coming after them in the comments, even though it's going to happen regardless, is that the thing that's missing from people's posts, whether it's performative or not performative, is the fact that people aren't being vulnerable. It's easy to talk about a, a quick experience or to talk about why you missed the, the mark because of your privilege. But it's another thing to actually deep, deep inside and find something that actually makes you vulnerable. Like for me, and, and I, I don't know if anybody saw my post last night because I was yeah. really heated and upset. You were. I talked about like the experiences I had hanging out with people that I shouldn't have been hanging out with when I was a child. And nobody, whether they're white or black, is going to come after me because I'm in the trenches with you. I'm not talking to you and telling you how you should think. I'm not going right. out there telling you, you need to change the way you're acting. I'm just telling you, this is an experience and you need to open up your eyes yeah. and see it and shine some light. Yeah. And I think that's what's missing the mark. And that gets me to my next point about how should a post actually be put together? Well, if you're mm -hmm. thinking about putting together a post just because you feel this duty to do something, then that's already the wrong approach. I think the right approach is, what am I trying to accomplish? What do I care about? And if you come from that, that, that end, you can back into what the post should be. And that might yeah. come from a vulnerable spa space. It might be you just doing a roundup about black shops or black designers you want to talk about. But you have to first decide, what am I really trying to accomplish and why? Um, not just, should I put up a post because I care about black people and I want people to know I care about black people. <laughs> I think that's yeah. fine. It's felt kind of good to know that I'm not alone crying in my car yes. and then mm. putting on a good face to go out and hang out with my white girlfriends because it's always, you know, there's so many black experiences, right? And me as the African girl refugee, you pull all these characteristics of me and they have never been welcomed as much as they're welcomed now. And, and it has just felt good to feel like I can be one of the girls, not just I am the black girl. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? In that space. Yeah. And the business opportunities that, I mean, have truthfully opened up for so many of us because now our voices 1, are being valued. Whether it's just for, for you know, I, as a brand, I need to show that I have... Um, black people on board or whatever, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to knock that work out of the park. You're never going to see something that's that amazing, you know? And so if I've been given this opportunity just as a way for you to atone for all the bullshit that you put forth before then, yeah, at least that door has been opened for me and I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that I kick ass so that the next little African refugee girl who looks like me, who comes up in this space and says she wants to do something, you'll say, I think she can do it because I've seen it before. Yes. I love that. I love that. And I think, you know, that's why I, I like have done some interviews on it. But I said, you know, even if some of the brand work is performative, yeah. yes. it puts them in a different pattern. The whole thing is cycle breaking. It's like yes. if they don't have to do it, it just won't get done. Brittany is obviously... The queen, she's amazing. Y'all should definitely be following her. But I encourage you to follow the whole four advisory board. They're incredible. Uh, we brought them on for a reason. We'll put their Instagrams below so you can link out to them and check them out. But you guys should definitely follow them. Question number two. Is there a hot take on photo dumps in quarantine? Should I be posting them instead of in real time content? What we're talking about here is like you get to the end of the weekend and you're like, okay, weekend recap. I do think that there is value in taking your stories more seriously and being more intentional about them. I think that waiting till the end of the day or to the end of the weekend to craft the story for that day forces you to be more intentional. I think that sometimes people have a little bit of Insta story bloat because they are bored. Uh, another thing that always happens to me, you like post a photo of the sunset and you're like, beautiful sunset, and then five minutes later it's a better sunset. And then you're like, damn it, I wish I didn't post that. Or, or now I'm gonna post two photos of a sunset. Does anyone really need that? Do I delete the first sunset? Who was this one? Waiting 
allows you to kind of step back and say like, well, what from this weekend was actually interesting? Is it worth the time to step back and say, well, how can I show the what I did this weekend in a way that will be interesting and valuable to my audience? Not that like I'm very good at social anymore. I don't take any of my own advice. I will do this on like a vacation. Like when I know, one, when I want to use photos from my Canon, from my professional camera, um, instead of iPhone ones. I also know that like I want to post a lot that day. Then I will generally uh, wait and do that at the end of the day when I'm on a vacation. When you're on a trip or you have a day when you're going to have a lot to post about, you just don't know kind of what the narrative of the day is going to be. Um, and you don't want to overload people. And I think that waiting and doing it at the end of the day is one way not to overload because you're like, oh, my lunch actually wasn't that interesting because my dinner was so great, so I don't have to post about lunch and dinner. I do think that it can help to make sure that the stories have more narrative, that they're a little more curated for your audience, but you do lose something, right? Like, you lose that in the moment, you lose that spontaneity. You know, by and by, that's why people are following you. And so I'm, I'm not sure that I would advocate for, you know, stepping back every day and, you know, doing your stories at the end of the day. I do think some of that in-the-moment posting on the day-to-day just makes more sense and is great. I'm going to flip from, like, why you should do it to maybe why you shouldn't to why you should do it again. I think it helps you be in the moment, you know? I think especially if you're somebody who, in their stories, is linking to a lot of accounts, putting swipe-ups in, editing the photos, editing video, doing lots of different stuff with font and text and drawing and pointing to shit and all that, right? Like, it just takes a while. And I don't think that anybody wants to live their life sitting while their, like, friends are at, at brunch, like, sitting there, you know, crafting a story for 15 minutes. Doing it, it, it at the end of the day also just allows you to uh, live a bit more in the moment and not be consumed with feeling like, I have to get this up right now. Because realistically, you don't, you know? People aren't sitting there desperately, like, just begging, waiting for you to post. You know, I think it's important to be consistent, but like give yourself a break sometimes as well and and let yourself just enjoy a moment, take a picture and say, all right, well, I'll edit that later and I'll post about it at the end of the day. That's not a bad thing. Yeah, I think if it's an in-feed photo dump, it works really well when it's like, here's what I wore last week. I see a lot of like fashion-specific bloggers be like, here's outfits that I didn't post about that I wore last week. And I think that like, there's no harm in trying something new and, and, uh, and doing something different. So you never know. It's when I was talking to someone this morning. She was you know, stuck at 20K, 15K followers for years. Uh, and just since March has grown to 40K. Like that's huge, you know? If it's a new kind of content or a new category that you're going after, it's going to kind of unlock some growth for you. So keep trying. Are there ways to monetize your content without creating a brand? We already talked about how to charge people for content. We talked about Substack and OnlyFans and Patreon and all that good stuff. And then there's obviously influencers who are launching brands, something Navy just opened her store in the West Village last week. Um, That's a pretty big undertaking. But there is a middle ground. You know, you can kind of dip your toe into things without taking it too seriously. One, you can create something like Joe Greer and Jamie, my friends who I talk about all the time, you know, one did a print sale uh, during quarantine, one just sold books and has done really, really well for themselves. That's been wildly successful. So that's certainly something to think about. But I just got an email recently from another, you know, forecast friend, uh, Quigley, uh, who, you know, has been selling these courses on Instagram and how to grow your Instagram. And I think that's turned into a really big business for her. Before I did four, I was starting businesses constantly before four. You know, I had a tie company, I had a record label, I had a photography magazine, I had a cycling clothing company. I think I had like a web development shop at some point. The reason I was doing so much is I had a Tumblr following. So I was like, well, I got a fucking built-in audience there. This gives me a really easy way to just try something. You know, if you want to start a clothing brand and you make a sample of a shirt, like, yeah, you could start the brand and launch the Instagram and you could do that whole thing. Or say you live in New York, you can go to Midtown, you can find a factory, you can, you can go to Mood, get the fabric, you know, have someone make the shirt, probably cost you 200 bucks to make the first one, and then you can make five of them at 20 bucks a pop. And you could just say on your Instagram, hey, 
this is a sample of something I'm thinking about. Are you guys interested? DM me if you are interested. It's 100 bucks a shirt. And see what happens. You, know, you don't have to turn it into this big thing yet. You can take that baby step. If it's not a physical product, and let's say you're doing a business advice or advice on Instagram, you can say, hey, I'm doing hour-long calls. It's, it's you know, 100 bucks to get an, on an hour-long call with me. I've got three spots in the next month. Let me know if you're interested. Just see. The worst thing that's gonna happen is it won't be successful, but also like, who's gonna know that? If nobody DMs you about your, your hour class or nobody DMs you about your boyfriend shirt you made, just be like, oh my God, overwhelmed by response, sold out, thank you guys so much. The internet's a fucking lie anyway, it doesn't matter. Nobody's gonna know, just try it. Who knows what you'll learn? That is my advice to you. And with that, we, we end the show. Again, if you're still listening and you got a sponsor post you want me to, to critique or uh, compliment rather, uh, send it through to me. Um, always send questions and we'll talk next week.